Well, two North American scientists have won this year's Nobel Prize for Physics. They were honored for their pioneering work on artificial intelligence and machine learning. Back in the 1980s, John Hopfield and Jeffrey Hinton set the stage for today's artificial intelligence by using physics to identify patterns in information. Their work now allows machines to mimic learning and remembering, functions that were previously thought to be the sole province of organic brains. At a tech conference last year, Hinton emphasized the differences are smaller than you might think. We're just a machine. We're a wonderful, incredibly complicated machine, but we're just a big neural net, and there's no reason why an artificial neural net shouldn't be able to do everything we can do. Modern artificial neural networks are structured on the two recipients' groundbreaking ideas in the field of statistical physics. Their models allowed machines to start making apparently intuitive leaps through association or identifying similar elements in systems, like humans can. That's radically changed, for instance, cancer diagnosis. You can train an artificial neural network on which are no, known to be tumors, images that you know this is a problem. You train the network and then it can become very fast and efficient at finding this in images and it can work much more quickly or it assists the doctor and be much more uh, certain in the diagnosis. And medical imaging is just one area where the research has had a huge impact. AI now also plays key roles in fields as diverse as large language models. Particle physics, atmospheric and climate modeling, and predicting the structure of proteins. The physics prize this year goes for research that has changed and continues to change the world as we know it. And joining me here in the studio now is my colleague Matthew Ward Ages from DW Science. So, Matthew, let's talk about who this award is going to. I understand it's awarded to the godfather of AI. Tell us about him. Yeah, so Jeffrey Hinton uh, has been described as the godfather of AI. You get described as things when you win other awards. And a few years ago, he won a Turing Award for his work in AI with two others. Yeah. So they were collectively described that way. Um, his uh, his co-awardee, uh, John Hopfield, has uh, not been described as that, but he's certainly a trailblazer in the field as well. He started it in terms of the research that won this award in 1982. He, def he created a, a network called the Hopfield Network. Yeah. And the best way to sort of describe it is, if you think of your brain, it's got neurons, it's got synapses connecting those neurons, and a neural network of an artificial variety replaces neurons with nodes. Mm -hmm. These connect up. And in this case, it was able to be fed a lot of information of imagery retain that information, and then when it was fed a distorted or uh, incomplete image, mm -hmm. similar to one that was already in there, it was able to churn out the most likely image that you were trying so to find. So connect the dots. Mm, correct. Yeah, fascinating. Frame, which is what our brains do. Mm. Uh, Jeffrey Hinton then built on that with work that he later did in the 1980s, and since then it has been iterated, iterated on to the point that now we have well, where we find ourselves uh, now with AI being part of our um, common parlance. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about it all the time and uh, finding new ways of how it might serve our, our species. I, I, you know, I, Hinton is a name that if you follow AI, you'll be familiar with. And he acknowledged when he received the, the prize or when it was announced, he also issued a warning about his own work. Tell me about that because it's not the first time he's issued a warning. And it was something also that was acknowledged by the Nobel Committee that decided on this award. AI has a great amount of potential to serve humanity's interests, mm -hmm. but there are also safety and ethical concerns that we should all take collective responsibility for. Uh, Hinton himself, as you point out, has said he is concerned about what might happen if we lose control of this technology that we have developed. He has said that it will be like an industrial revolution, but instead of the um, muscle of humanity being replaced by machines, it will be the intellect of humanity mm -hmm. being replaced by machines. So there is a lot of promise, there is a lot of potential consequence. His point is that we need to be very careful about how we proceed forward um, and to do so with guardrails, to do so with mm -hmm. structure around the way that we pursue this technology. In what impact is their work already having? I mean, is it all about AI? Well, I guess it depends on how you define AI in this mm -hmm. case, but some good examples that, that come to mind are in healthcare. Yeah. So you get an X-ray, uh, you're not sure what's wrong with you. A doctor might take a look at it and have a pretty good idea of what it is. 
AI is already being used to an analyze imagery in healthcare settings to be able to identify tumors wow. that a human eye might not be able to detect. Mm -hmm. In astrophysics, we're trying to look at galaxies and stars that are quite a way away. Mm -hmm. When we get the imagery, it might be fuzzy. When we run it through an AI, we can start to identify where stars and galaxies may be. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about asteroids. The European Space Agency has launched a rocket to try and investigate what happens when one's nearby. Mm -hmm. We can use AI to determine the trajectory of the asteroids that we do know about. Fascinating. Yeah, it can do a lot that humans can do maybe a little better. We just don't want to sell that too loudly right now. That's right. Matthew, thank you. Thank you.